So we're really excited, as I mentioned, uh, Cornelia kicked us off with these, this uh, foundation and growth in the ecosystem um, around GitOps. So what better way than to look at some of the biggest cloud vendors um, showing how they're um, providing GitOps offerings. So I'm really happy to have uh, Chris Sanders and Jonathan Innes joining us from Microsoft. They are part of the um, uh, Arc uh, Kubernetes and Arc product team. So we've been uh, really excited to be working with them uh, on a lot of great innovations. So with that, I will hand it off to Chris and Jonathan. Thanks, Tamau, and hey, everybody. Um, welcome to GitOps Days 2021, and we're gonna talk about uh, GitOps in uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, first, some introductions. Um, I'm Chris Sanders, and I'm a program manager in, uh, in Azure, and I uh, focus on the GitOps part. Jonathan? Yeah, and hey, everyone. Welcome to GitOps Days. Uh, my name is Jonathan Ennis, and I am a software engineer on the Azure Arc for Kubernetes team, working on GitOps as well. Awesome. So Jonathan and I are going to walk you through um, through GitOps in, in Azure. And so let me start with sharing my screen. And I'm going to share, uh, share a deck that I'll do talk to a little bit here. All right. Can you see that? All right. Great. Um, oops, let me see. There we go. So let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the journey, uh, the GitOps journey in Azure. You know, why is GitOps there? And what does it look like? And it all starts with uh, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. In 2019, Azure introduced the uh, concept of Azure Arc, and it was all about being able to manage uh, hybrid environments, whether you're multi-cloud, on-prem plus cloud. And um, that's where Azure Arc uh, uh, started. And one of the uh, umbrella, one of the pieces in the umbrella is Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, the ability to manage Kubernetes uh, located uh, clusters located anywhere. And um, with that uh, initial uh, offering, we started, to, we wanted to offer GitOps with Flux One, okay? And uh, in the previous talk, Cornelia was talking about the inflection point. So we actually started the planning and the implement implementation of using GitOps within Azure Arc way back in summer of 2019. So we were also uh, look, looking at this as a major way to manage Kubernetes even then. Um, it takes a while to get services going in there. And so uh, we were just able to, to GA this uh, this current March, uh, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes with GitOps built in using Flux One. And of course, one of the reasons we were looking at Flux is because we really want to be using open source tools as much as we can. It, it was a CNCF uh, sandbox project. Okay, I'm back folks. So with Arc, um, the config operator is uh, installed uh, with the Arc agents themselves. So it's automatic, you install the Arc agents in your Kubernetes cluster and you get the config operator, which allows you to manage the creation of Flux uh, instances in your Kubernetes cluster. So that's Arc Kubernetes. Of course, Azure has the Azure Kubernetes service for many years. This is the managed Kubernetes offering within Azure. And we want symmetry in management between your Arc Kubernetes clusters and your Azure Kubernetes clusters. So you can start managing them with the same tool sets. So we are bringing GitOps with Flux One to Azure Kubernetes service as well. Uh, it's been in private preview since uh, this last December. And in this case for, a for AKS, the config operator is installed as an add-on to AKS because AKS has an add-on uh, capability. So then uh, once we GA'd Arc Kubernetes in March, we immediately started working on implementing Flux2. We knew Flux2 was there for many months back into 2020, but we couldn't start implementing it until we actually got the service, uh, Arc Kubernetes service out uh, to GA. In March, we started immediately implementing Flux2. Jonathan is the engineer uh, responsible for implementing Flux2, and he's gonna talk some more about it. And um, we're working very closely with Weaveworks and the Zenit team uh, with help on the upstream aspects of, of Flux as we implement uh, Flux within Azure itself. And um, in, we also have within uh, our Kubernetes and AKS a new capability called a cluster extension. And the cluster extension will replace the add-on capability that you see in AKS. Uh, it's already preview, public preview in Arc Kubernetes, the extension capability. And it's the ability to add new features into a 
to a Kubernetes cluster like like policy, like monitoring, and like GitOps. And so we will be uh, releasing a preview of Flux 2 as an extension into our Kubernetes and then later into AKS uh, uh, in, in the coming months. So that's kind of the journey. I just wanted to step back a second and you, many of you are familiar with this, but you know, why, why did Azure start looking at GitOps way back in 2019? And it's because as Cornelia has talked about many times, it's really, really a great way to manage Kubernetes clusters and eventually other types of systems. And of course, you know, you're using here the, the real gem to this is that your system state, your, your cluster state is all described declaratively. So it's in Kubernetes manifests. These manifests are stored in your Git repo. And you agree with GitOps that the Git, your Git repo is gonna be the source of the truth for your Kubernetes system, right? And the Git repo is gonna be the place where you do your operations. That's where you do your create of your Kubernetes objects, the changes, the deletes, everything happens through pull requests and merges in your Git repo. This means, of course, you get a lot of benefits. That means that every change First of all, the state of your cluster is visible at any time just by looking at the, the, the manifest in your Git repo. Any change that happens, you just go to the Git repo and look at what changed from one version to the next uh, of the files and you can see what changes happened. Um, it's all version controlled. So if, if, if you have trouble with one uh, version, you can always roll back to the previously known good version. Very easy to do. Once uh, a change and, and the, the actual um, reconciliation in the cluster is handled by the cluster agent. In this case, in our case, it's Flux that is tracking the Git repo and actually uh, pulling the manifest and making the changes, uh, making uh, the changes through the API server actually in the cluster. That same agent is also keeping the cluster from drifting. So it's all it's checking all the time to make sure that the cluster is in the state that is declared in your Git repo. So you put all of these together, all of these. Uh, you know, definitions and principles, and it really makes for a very, very nice system of managing Kubernetes clusters in our case. Well, when you look at the value prop to, to customers, then what they're seeing is that you get application team productivity where the application, and this is all part of the move to um, containers as well, and Kubernetes is that the application teams can focus on their apps and the business logic in their apps, and they, they worry a lot less about the infrastructure where the apps are actually gonna be running. And so, and GitOps in particular helps with that and that the, the, the app teams worry about their CI pipeline and doing their builds out to the Git repo. And at that point, um, the operators within the cluster take over and actually deploy to the, to the clusters. Uh, it helps for app team autonomy where you can have different app teams have different Git repos. And all you need, all the uh, cluster admin needs to do is put different, ins different instances of Flux in the cluster and the different teams can uh, be actually running and sharing space within a cluster um, in a multi-tenancy aspect, but all the app team needs to worry about is their, is their Git repo. Uh, there's really great safety nets um, where uh, um, you have, of course, a rollback because it's, uh, it's Git-based and it's uh, version-based. You can always roll back to previous versions. Um, you can use things like Flagger for safe rollouts. And also you get very quick because the whole state of that system is, you get quick recovery because the state of that system is uh, stored in the, in the Git repo. Uh, security, you can start restricting API server access because the Flux agent or the Argo CD agent is pulling from the Git repo, it's a pull model. Uh, and so you can restrict access to the API server. You don't have to have build tools now having access to be able to push into the, uh, to the, uh, to the cluster. And so uh, you help with the security aspects across your clusters. Uh, repeatability, of course, because you you basically have templatized uh, state within your Git repo, you can very easily automate and create different uh, 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 copies of particular uh, clusters uh, very easily. So why did we make it managed GitOps within Azure? Why did we make it a first-class citizen within Azure? So Azure and any cloud for that matter 
you know, has resources. They have virtual machines, they have Kubernetes clusters, they have networks. And all of these then are managed by tools within those clouds. In our case, Arc, the Arc Kubernetes is a connected cluster resource from Azure. Uh, the Azure Kubernetes service clusters are also first class resources in Azure. And as first class resources, they can then be managed through, through the Azure Resource Manager. You get full cred through the APIs. You can start uh, uh, managing through tools like monitor, through policy, through security, through backup. All of that happens because these are official Azure resources. So we wanted to make the GitOps piece an official resource as well. Uh, in our case, we call it a source control configuration. And what that uh, means is that now within either a, when you're using GitOps in an, in an AKS cluster or GitOps in an ARC cluster, you can start managing the GitOps piece using these other tools uh, within Azure. You can get full cred on the um, installation of GitOps and the changes. You get auto updates of, of the controllers. You get health, uh, health checks. You can always see the inventory of your uh, GitOps at any time. And you can also automate it scale using you know, tools like uh, Azure Policy and different automation tools to, for the at scale story. So this is the reason why we, we basically built in GitOps to Azure and allowed it to be a first class resource uh, within Azure. Uh, when we talk to customers, there's a, a couple of uh, scenarios that really pop and I'm sure you guys have, and girls have seen a lot more. Um, one is that, you know, Customers are finding that they have Kubernetes clusters that are spread out. They either have either multiple clouds they have to um, run in for various reasons. They also maybe have multiple stores. They have multiple branch offices. They have different sites like hospitals or factories or ships or mines or 5G, all kinds of, I haven't got one for satellites yet, but I'm waiting for that one. Um, uh, all these places are starting to run Kubernetes because folks are containerizing their apps and what they need is consistent management across all of these Kubernetes clusters. They wanna keep the configurations up to date. They have the application life cycle and that's where GitOps really shines is helping with this uh, type of scenario and uh, where you can have your cluster admins apply um, you know, the common baseline and security configs across all the clusters from a single Git repo. You can then manage thousands of clusters and also the app team. Okay, and the app teams of course can then focus on their apps and not on the Kubernetes piece and be, and be assured that their apps are delivered to all these different sites and clouds. A second uh, scenario is multi-tenancy for organizations within a large company. And for instance, we talked to uh, some who are using Azure Kubernetes service. They like the aspect of managed Kubernetes, uh, and what they, but what they want to deliver within their company to different organizations is Kubernetes as a service. So each different org within the company only has to worry about the websites or the apps that they're building. And they just uh, know that there's gonna be a, a place where they can run those uh, containers within a, a Kubernetes cluster. So what this means is, is shared clusters, you know, the cluster admins build out shared clusters with multi-tenancy. The cluster admins uh, then apply the common baselines across their clusters using GitOps. But then they also set up separate um, instances of, of GitOps for every org. And each one of those flux instances then points to a different uh, Git repo that's owned by that particular org. And that manages the application rollouts for those different orgs. So that's, those are the two big scenarios that we see, and they are big ones. Um, the number one especially is gonna be huge over the next uh, uh, three, four, five years. So what I'd like to do now is just real a quick, uh, real quick, I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna share a different screen. Just a quick view of what GitOps and Azure looks like today. And just remember this is with Flux One, and that we're uh, actively working on Flux 2, and that will start showing up uh, uh, this month and next month as well. So here we're just looking at the Azure portal, and here we see a couple of Kubernetes clusters. We have one that's an ARC cluster, say it could be a warehouse any place around the world, and then we have a corporate uh, AKS cluster, all right? So if I go into the ARC cluster here, uh, we can see that GitOps is, is uh, enabled in this ARC cluster, 
and we can start adding configurations. This is what we call a source control configuration. And each one of these within the cluster becomes an instance of flux one in the cluster. And you can, you can uh, configure it any way you want uh, with the different parameters and point it to your Git repo. Um, you can also make many. So this, the cluster baseline would have been laid down by the cluster admins. And then you can add, the cluster admin can go in and add other GitOps configs for the different application teams that also are gonna lay down apps to this to this cluster. If I go back to the dashboard and go to AKS, you can, and this is in private preview, um, you can also get this exactly the same experience, but now you're in the managed AKS uh, experience here. And you can, again, lay down the cluster baseline. Now that the cluster admins have laid it down across AKS and the uh, on-prem cluster, and then you can also add other configurations. The final one I want to show here is and this is one of the advantages of having you know, tools like Azure where you can do it at scale is that you look at, um, we go look at Azure policy and we look at a definition here. And even Azure decides to be slow today. There we go. And we have three built-in definitions for applying GitOps to uh, either AKS clusters or to ARC clusters. And what this means is you can take one of these um, policy definitions and you can uh, make an assignment where you assign it to a particular scope, whether it's an Azure subscription or a, a several resource groups. And every, every ARC cluster or AKS cluster within that scope will get an instance of Flux installed in it configured to uh, pull, to monitor a particular Git repo. So this is a way to automate at scale the installation of GitOps and the enablement of GitOps within your Kubernetes clusters. All you had to do was literally connect your cluster to Azure as an ARC cluster or create an AKS cluster within the scope of the definition and it would actually install GitOps. So with that, I'm going to uh, pop back over to, I'm gonna stop sharing and let uh, Jonathan talk about our work with Flux2. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Let me share my screen as well. Yeah, so as Chris, oh, well, hold on. Let me make sure it's coming up. Can you see my screen? Okay. It's showing the presentation. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so as Chris just laid out, um, we are actively working on Flux2, and Flux2 is currently under development and will uh, very soon be in private preview. Um, and so I'm just going to quickly walk through some of the benefits that we get with Flux2 um, that are part of the GitOps toolkit, and then walk through a little bit of the um, an API overview and a little bit of a preview of what the API is eventually going to look like and what the process of installing Flux2 is going to look like on a cluster when we eventually release it in private preview. So. Just looking at the benefits here really quickly, um, obviously Flux2 is the latest and greatest version of Flux. Uh, obviously, as Chris just laid out, we have Flux v1 as an offering on Azure and it's GA, um, but Flux2 has all the rich feature goodness and Flux1 is currently going out of support. It's under maintenance mode um, and it'll very soon be archived. Uh, so we at Azure are very excited to move to Flux2 and offer the new version that has all the latest and greatest features. Um, as Chris laid out, because we're now going to offer Flux2 as an extension, you get all the goodness that we're offering uh, for extensions on Azure. And so what that means is that um, you can deploy all these extensions to different clusters at scale. Um, you get auto upgrade scenarios. So if you are interested in having Azure auto upgrade your quest or the version of Flux for you, that will happen automatically for you, as well as you get some configurability that happens with extensions. So um, for instance, with the extension install of Flux2, we bring a all single set of controllers to the entire cluster, um, as opposed to Flux1, where it was a single instance of the operator per configuration. Now you just do a single extension install, and that occurs at the cluster-wide scope. And so you can configure the set of controllers. Um, when we onboard the extension in the default state, uh, we'll bring on the source, customize, helm, and notification controllers. Um, but the image reflector and auto image automation controllers are currently under alpha. And if you so want to enable those controllers as well and bring them with the extension, 
you can do so as well, as well as disabling any of the other controllers if for some reason you don't want to bring them. Um, obviously, Flux 2 offers a lot of flexibility because it's the, now the operator model um, that relies heavily on custom resource definitions. And so this brings a lot of uh, scalability and uh, a lot of observability improvements to the Flux ecosystem. Um, a lot of, we're bringing a lot of observ observability improvements to the Azure data plane. We're pushing a lot of status back uh, up into Azure. So you're able to view this very easily. Um, and this is a huge improvement from Flux V1 where um, we were not bringing as much information back into the Azure control plane. Um, as well as you get a lot of the benefits of the notification controller, what, uh, which supports web hooks and notifications sent back to certain APIs um, that you want to, you might be able to configure or specify. Um, Additionally, uh, now that we have Flux 2, we are offering uh, the opportunity to um, have configure a single source when you install the configuration of the Flux 2 resource. Uh, you will connect it to a single source, which will be a single Git repository, but that single Git repository, you can configure as many different customizations underneath that Git repository, um, which essentially define whether you want to apply different paths from that single source. Um, and so you will have the opportunity to um, install a bunch of different paths within that source and also create dependencies between those paths if you so need. So for instance, if you had a CRD definition that you wanted to onboard before you had to onboard the actual custom resources, you could do so with this new configuration object. Um, so with that, that's the benefits I've laid out. I'm going to give a short little overview and preview of what this is going to look like on a cluster. Um, so let me break out of here. Okay, so yes, I can. Is that better? Okay, so right now what I have here is a kind cluster that has on been onboarded to the extension. Um, what we can see here is with the extension enabled on this cluster, we have the home controller, customized controller, notification controller, and source controller onboarded into the Flux system namespace, as well as a couple Azure agents that were onboarded as part of the extension and are gonna kind of define the communication between the Flux controllers and the Azure control plane. Um, so this is what you get when you install the extension on a particular cluster. Um, now I'm gonna walk over to what a configuration looks like when you're installing, after you've installed this extension, how that's gonna look when you wanna actually install a Flux configuration instance. So I'm going to show a REST API, um, basically the entire, uh, the entire set of properties that will come when you install this configuration, what we kind of offer you. Um, so essentially, this is a configuration object. And you, we basically all walk through the properties of what um, this configuration object offers. So at the top level, we have a scope, which is consistent with Flux v1 and what we offered at Flux v1, which is you can define this uh, configuration at either the cluster or namespace scope level. So if you want to give this configuration specific permissions to only apply things within its own namespace, you can do so, or you can give it full cluster-wide permissions to apply things outside of the namespace you install it in. Um, we specify the namespace of this configuration. Um, the source kind of this configuration is Git repository, and currently the only source kind that we offer is Git repository, um, but we'll eventually offer other source kinds that are supported by the GitOps toolkit. Um, and then within this Git repository object, we're defining a URL to a Bitbucket on-prem instance. Um, and so we also have all the additional API fields that come with the GitOps toolkit, um, which include timeout, sync interval. Uh, we have a repository reference, which we can specify either a branch or a commit, um, basically pointing to a specific instance on this particular Git repository as well as we're defining known hosts to communicate with this particular URL over SSH. Um, and then finally, one of the big improvements with the Flux configuration in Flux 2 is now we can define multiple paths for this configuration. Um, and so here we have multiple customizations that we're, that we're deploying as part of this configuration. So here we have the, an apps customization that is deploying on the app slash staging path. And we have an infrastructure customization that's deploying on the infrastructure path. And this particular apps path depends on the infrastructure path. And so we'll see that this infrastructure is going to be laid down first prior to actually installing the apps infrastructure. Um, so then additionally, as the last thing, we have a private key to communicate with this um, Git repository. So I'm gonna do a put on this particular Flux configuration resource and we'll see exactly what happens on the cluster. So we see that this thing is created 
And uh, in a second, so let me go ahead and see. So essentially what's happening at this point is the Fox configuration was submitted to the Azure control plane. Um, and in a second, what we'll see is the Fox configuration is going to be pulled down by the Azure agents and it will start installing pods onto this cluster um, by communicating with the repository as the defined state. Um, we're first gonna see the infrastructure pods come up and then we'll see the apps pods come up. So once this thing communicates and it can take up to a minute for this configuration to be pulled down. Um, so here we see uh, we have a Fox config that's starting to be deployed. Um, it's going to be in the pod info namespace and it's at cluster scope. And if we now look at the pods that are on the cluster, um, it's going to take a second. And we see that the ingress, uh, the Nginx ingress controller pods and the Redis pods are coming up from this pod info um, Fox configuration. And so it's laying down this infrastructure piece before it's actually gonna lay down the pod info app. And so these are in a container creating state. Um, once they become in a running state, we're gonna see that the pod info pod is going to come up. And so we give it a second. And yes, so we see that the pod info pod has come up and we've essentially deployed a Fox configuration. And now this thing is fully connected with the Azure control plane. Um, as a final thing, I'm gonna show what we're sending back to Azure um, and the kind of data that you'll get within the Azure control plane now that we're offering better observability. So if I do a get on this particular Fox configuration resource, once it's synchronized with the Azure control plane, if I scroll down here, what we'll see is we're getting this statuses field as well as some other information about the sync time, config applied time, and what commit we're syncing on. We get uh, the statuses field that's going to show us all of the flux objects that we've deployed from this repository. And so we get information on the kinds of objects, what their compliance state is, so whether they've applied appropriately, and then all the status condition objects as well as additional properties that might come as part of this particular flux uh, resource type. So. That's what we're offering with Flux 2. Uh, as Chris said, it's still under development and will be in private preview very, very soon. Um, so we're really excited at Azure to be offering this as a new offering and to be moving away from Flux 2.1 onto Flux 2. Um, so with that, I am going to, um, or with that, you can ask any questions that you have of me or Chris over Slack um, if you have any questions about what I've just, uh, what I've just shown.